Hi there Intune friends, this is not going to be a video about Intune, so if you don't care about Oracle Java, I would suggest that you don't look at this video. This has only to do with Oracle Java. In our last videos we have done so IE mode, so this is a page in Edge loading IE mode. We have installed Java, so Java seems to want to run, but we are being blocked because we need to add this URL into the exception site. How do you do that? Well, you can do it manually, I'm going to show that, but that's not what I recommend. It's better to push these settings so users don't have to do anything. But we click OK here. So here you see it's an error because of security reasons. So we take this URL, this is what we need to put in exception list. If I click here on the Windows button and then just type Java, you get the configure Java. That's the one we want. Here we have four tabs. So actually, we're going to work mostly in security and advanced, but let's go through them all. So we have a general tab where you can see about like the version and stuff. So um, Java 8, update 361. Then if you have a proxy or something, I don't have, then definitely configure that. But I don't have that. I go directly to internet. You can empty uh, temporary internet files and see, but we don't do so much here. To see the Java security tab, it just take you there. So uh, if we go to Java here first, you can see if it's running on the user or system. So it's user, but uh, hopefully it's a system. Yep, we run it in system. We can see it's 32-bit. Uh, so the two first tab, not specially interesting. This is interesting. Definitely need to have this uh, checked for it to work in the browser. You have only two levels, very high or high. And here we have our exception uh, site list. So if we modify this one and add, that would make this video very short. We just add it here and then click OK. You see that it shows up here. Nice. So now if we reload this, it should actually allow this one to run. I'll restart the Internet Explorer. Looks a bit more clean. So now, see, since we added it as an exception list now, we can allow it to run. Nice, and we got the happy, fa happy face. So you would think you're good now, right? No, there are a lot of things. We don't want the user to need to manually add the exception list, so we're going to do it. And also, you saw you had to click run there. That's annoying too. That's going to be the video after that. So we have a lot more job just to make it easier for the user to run Oracle Java. So let's put it back as it was before configure Java. We don't want people to need to go here manually. I mean, that works, so you could keep that, but we, we don't want users. They can misspell, they can forget to put HTTPS because you actually have to put HTTPS and everything. You can't use wildcards. So if we put it back here, we close the browser and then start it again, we should be back to where we were before, right? So it's not in the exception list now, so it's not going to run. It's not the happy camper. So how do we do that um, more uh, managed so the user don't have to add or you have to add? Well, we can create some config files. We're actually going to need to create three config files, one called exceptions.site and one deployment.properties and one called deployment.config. Deployment.config is the file that Java always going to look for at a certain path, and that file going to uh, point to deployment properties, and deployment properties going to point out where the exception size is. So let's start with the most logical, but it's actually the last one. We can just open a normal notepad. It's going to be the exception list. So here we just specify all the URLs, uh, actually not the URLs, the domain name, so we just want it up here. Let's add, just to make the list a bit longer, we add some that we're not actually going to use. Let's say this site exists except without HTTP. Maybe it exists also without the um, WW. And uh, we add one more of these. We just need the first one, but I like to have a longer list to show that you can have a lot. And you can have different URLs also. Let's save this one, and for now, let's say everything on the desktop, why not? And this one should be named exception.sites. 
So now we have our site list, but nothing is reading it. I'll, let's create another file. We need to create um, uh, three of these, and we have created one already, exception.sites. So for this one, I'm going to Google because I don't remember all this. I know what it's going to be named. So it's going to be called deployment.config. We can take examples. So this is something you don't do very often. Yep, this is exactly the one I wanted. So I'll put this, uh, this link in the video. So this one can only accept two values. We're creating deployment.config. You know what? Let's name it already that before we even write anything into it. I'm going to save this one. Save as. I'll still put it at the desktop. Again, all files. And the file name is going to be deployment.config. OK, deployment.config have two values. Okay, so deployment.config have two values. I'm searching for them here. So one, yeah, the deployment config file contains two properties. One is called deployment.system.config. Uh, That's showing where the deployment dot uh, property file is. If we have some example, we can steal directly. Perfect. This is what we want. And this is what we want. Let's see, have I enabled uh, Windows V? I have. Perfect. Then we're going to copy deployment properties. And we're also going to copy this one here. And I'm going to explain them a bit better. Just let me put them here first. So here we have deployment properties is equal to this path. So this file here doesn't exist yet. That's going to be uh, one more we're going to create, the third and last file. So this one basically, deployment.config, if it's actually in the same directory here, see Windows Sun Java deployment, we will create that. Then it says deployment properties are here in this file. And this deployment properties is going to um, point to our exception.sites. So a lot to do that. Then there is a last one who's boolean. Uh, where is the boolean? Yes. And th that one is by default default. So if you don't set anything, I'm going to set it to true. So this is becomes mandatory. So I go back to my file here. Uh, mandatory equals to true. Equals to true. I think it has to be a capital T. Actually, lowercase doesn't seem to matter. Okay, if it doesn't matter, then I'll go with the lowercase. So this one is done. Now we need to do this file here, deployment properties. Is this uh, a bit confusing? Yes. Let's save this one. Save as. So again, we don't want any file. If not the extension, then it's going to add a test to that. See if I do Windows V. It's deployment properties we're doing now. So yeah, very confusing. We have done deployment config. That's the first file that Java just looked at. That one tells where do I find deployment properties? Well, it's going to say in the same folder and this this one. So this one, we just need to tell where is the um, exception sites. So I don't know that one either. Let's Google that. Deployment properties examples. We can put the exception list also. Here we got one, perfect. And if we look at, I'll just yeah, search here, exception list. Since this is probably something you're never going to do, I'm going to give you the, the code for this in the description of this video. Yep, I'm lucky. This is the one I wanted. I couldn't find it when I searched. Maybe I did a typo. 
So we want the deployment user security exception list, and we want that to be equal to the path to where it is. So I'll copy this one. I'll go back here. So our deployment properties. And in the next video, we're going to add some more properties in here. But for now, we just want the site list. OK, then we have to put where, and you have to write it in a bit special format. So C, and then not colon directly, but backslash colon and then double backslash and it's going to be under windows backslash sun backslash java backslash deployment and we can add it under its own place security backslash exception dot sites that's what we named it right okay so very confusing but we're going to get there so we have our deployment properties, deployment config. So deployment config, if we put that in this folder here, it's going to find it. And then this one's going to say, hey, if you want to read the properties, go to this file. And this file is like, yeah, I have a lot of properties. Right now, we only one. We're going to fill more. It says, oh, if you want to add the uh, exception sites, read whatever is in this file. And this file I close, but it's where we put all the URLs. So we got all the files now. Uh, I got a feeling I could have done this a bit more uh, uh, easier to follow, but that's that's fine. You're smart guys. So here are the three files. I open a new tab. So we said all these are under um, C. So let's start. We go to C. Then we have the Windows. And from here we need a folder called uh, uh, Sun. And we don't have that, so we're going to create it. And it's important you call them these names because the, um, the, because the deployment.config look for this place. That's hard coded. So we call, we said sun. Yes. Did I not call it sun? Okay. Rename it. Yes. Sun. Continue. The yes. Perfect. Under Sun, we want to call, we said Java. Then we can do Control Shift N to create a new folder. Continue. Yes. And we called you Java. And within here, well, to do it logically, let's create one more. Control uh, Shift N, which called deployment. The Deployment. We need one more. Ah, uh, let's create all them now. Uh, under deployment, let's shift uh, Control N. Here we need to uh, create one security. Why? Because that's where we put exemption list. Security. So now, here you see under deployment. There we need to put two files. Which ones? Deployment config must be there. Deployment property could be actually somewhere else because deployment config points to that one. But since we have said that to be here, then yes, please put them together. So we always need permi admin permission because we are under uh, C Windows. So we have C deployment config who said, hey, find deployment.properties in this perfect. Deployment of property says, hey, find exception.sites under this URL here. So we need to put uh, exception.sites there. Wouldn't surprise me if I've done a typo. So I paste this one in here. And we're going to script all this so all this be done uh, uh, automatically and uh, in Intune. That's the last video. OK, so now we have everything here. So if we open uh, uh, Java, configure Java, hopefully we see the exception list here. And we do. Excellent. So these were the lists that we have uh, added. The problem here now is not really a problem. If you add another site, HTTP, uh, I'll just put something gibberish. That's not going to uh, stay necessarily. Yes, it wants you to, uh, because we manage this list. So if I go back here, it's gone. So that means if you want to modify this list now, you have to modify this file here. Well, 
let's do that we can open with let's open with well it will not let us save it right because we're not opening as admin if I add the uh, gbn dot uh, dot cloud always a capital C I don't know why uh, and we save this it's probably gonna say that it doesn't have permission because we are not that I didn't open it as admin you want to put in documents yeah let's put it in documents that's my dream to put it in documents okay so let's go to documents I'll cut this one and now we go back to where we were and I overwrite it because now it's gonna prompt me continue so now we should have five sites if you get the same problem as me I forgot to change it as a um, test you can easily go uh, properties or we can go options and we need to view file extensions so hide extension for file uh, for known file types yeah it's a known one so now we're gonna see that it's a txt so I'm gonna delete this one and I'm just gonna f2 and rename this one yes I'm admin do it so if we look at this one again let's open this one in a notepad just to see what we are looking at I can open it in notepad plus plus so we have this fifth URL now. So that one should uh, take place. So if we go uh, Java config or configure Java, it's more correct. And edit list. We now have this one also. So we have five sites. So if now we go back to this page or Java, I'm going to close this one and open edge again. If we now go on the Jeff, uh, Java test page, it should fail, right? No, it's working. Perfect. And why didn't it ask us to run? Well, it actually remembered that we have run it before. So if I close it and go Java, configure Java, and then go again to security, and then we re restore security prompts. That means that all that we have said, oh, yes, allow or block. If we did block by mistake, yes, restore. And now it's going to ask us again. So if I open Edge and it's going to run IE mode, we see that on the little icon here. It's going to prompt now and ask, hey, do you want to run? So if we click run, we're going to see the happy face. But we don't want our users to need to click run or not. So that's going to be the next video to create the rule set to allow so this pop-up doesn't even show up. In the next video, we're going to show how the user doesn't even have to see this pop-up and need to click run in order for it to work. So thank you very much for following along this far. See you in the next video.